If you're building a house extension, you'll need to consider whether to make the walls timber frame or whether to make it all masonry. Let's talk about the pros and cons of both these wall types and what I recommend for your own builds. Here's a typical house which we've done some work on. It's a masonry cavity wall with concrete floors. That's block work in a leaf and facing brick outer leaf. It can also be block work with the render on the outer leaf. And this house, this house is timber frame. Really? They both look the same, don't they? So just because a building structure is timber frame, it doesn't mean it looks any different from masonry cavity. Of course, we'll always start a comparison with cost. Of course, we need to look at the construction and the materials of both wall types to get an idea of what the cost might be. And we'll start with timber frame. So from outside to inside, we have 102 millimeters brickwork. And this is what we call the outer leaf. And it's that funny size because 102 millimeters is actually four inches. The outer leaf is just the cladding or a rain screen. And then we have a 50 millimeter cavity. 50 millimeters is the minimum size permitted and don't let anyone persuade you to do it smaller. This cavity has three purposes. First is it acts as a barrier to moisture. Uh, second, it's a bit of a thermal barrier since air is an insulator, which can help slow down heat loss. And the third and the most misunderstood purpose of a cavity is to form a ventilated void between outside and inside using things like parapen vents. And see my video here about how ventilating voids will save you from condensation and moisture leakage catastrophes in your home builds. Next, we need our cavity insulation sitting against the inner leaf. And this is the only part of the wall whose thickness can change depending on the level of insulation you require. And how do we get that thickness? Well, we can use some online calculators like I'm doing here. See my other video about how to do this and why this U-value stuff is so important nowadays. So we found our cavity insulation is this thickness and that sits against a breather membrane stapled to some sheathing. For a house extension, 9mm OSB is fine. Sheathing stops any horizontal racking of the frame and also helps with air tightness. And side note, for OSB or for ply, because the glue they use is pretty much impermeable, I'll put some holes in to allow the vapour to pass through the sheet and get to the the membrane which is then able to do its special stuff and then for the inner leaf we have our structural studs our timber frame and the inner leaf is the bit that's holding the roof and the floors up and it's the load bearing bit for domestic housing studs will either be 89 by 38 millimeter treated cls 4x2 CLS is the way the merchants will describe it, but that's the actual size of it. And you need to know these exact sizes because you need to set it out properly. Although usually these days you need to go bigger and I'll go for 145 by 45 graded and treated timber and centers will be either around 400 millimeters or 600 millimeters, depending on loadings. I'm sure I've gone into these different choices elsewhere on the channel and I'll leave the links below. You'll have your structural engineer anyway to help you with these sizes if you're doing it to build in regulations and if you're not I've made a video about how to select your timber sizes here. Now we'll put more insulation between the studs, leaving us space to run our services on the warm side. And then it's a vapor barrier, and then 12 and a half millimeter plasterboard sheets to form the shell, and around three millimeter of plaster skim over the top. Now for a masonry cavity wall outside to in. And we've got our brick again, then our cavity. We need a minimum of this much uh, cavity insulation, so a bit more than the timber frame. For Scotland, it should be even more to comply with the slightly more onerous regulations up there. And we add that to our 50mm air cavity and we get this amount in total. This then sits against 140mm thick block work secured using these wall ties with the plastic clips since we never want the insulation to move and start to bridge the cavity. And then on the inside of the block work, we have the option of full coat plaster or dot dab plasterboard and skim. I'll always go dot dab, which means I can use drywall boxes for my electrical work and run my cables in the void. Full coat 
plaster saves you a little floor space but it's more hassle to do your cabling and back boxes which need to be cut into the block work in order to sit flush with the plaster wall well with all that done let's get back to the cost and using SketchUp I'm going to virtually build a typical wall in both formats using all these sizes we've just got and we can use this to help us quantify and therefore to cost an area of wall and our aim is to get a square meter cost comparison between the two wall types. Now I like SketchUp not just because it's very easy to learn and free to use for the self builder but also because it is great for quantifying the elements so you can create a virtual building in effect like you're building it yourself as a practice run in a sort of virtual world. I've made a few demos and tutorials which you can see here and here here I'm drawing out both wall types to create a price comparison and let's make the wall 2.4 meters high and 6 meter long since that will take account of wastage more accurately than if we just draw out a 1 square meter of wall. We can divide by 14.4 at the end to give us a square meter rate and now let's take our quantities from our model export them to a spreadsheet and then paste them into this pricing template I use and if you want to see in detail how that works you can check out my videos here. I'll get the prices of each individual component and material for example for the kingspan the bricks timber and such I've emailed my merchant who has given me uh, these prices same for a pallet of the bricks and so on and for the masonry cavity wall we'll need to include for sand and cement I'll use those prices to populate my costs in this column here what about labor someone's got to actually build this frame lay these bricks install the insulation a timber frame wall like this for our 14 square meters will take between half a day and a day for me to construct including fitting the insulation fixing the usb sheathing uh, the membrane and the plasterboard on the inside it's the insulation that takes the most time and for that i make sure the spacing between the studs corresponds to an even division of a sheet of insulation and that means a lot less cuts saving me time and waste. Insulation costs a fortune right now. And for the outer leaf of facing brick, let's assume a brickie will take an additional two hours to do this area of brickwork. The same for both wall types. And here I'll guess what his day rate will be. And then we see our total for 14.4 meters squared. We'll then divide that total by 14.4. And here we have our square meter rate then add it all together and I think we've got our cost per square meter for both wall types and really there's not a lot of difference in cost nor is there much difference in time I'll leave a link to the files in the description so you can play about with them so what do I recommend well for timber frame I've got flexibility of a range of rain screens the outer cladding I can use facing bricks but also I could use cedar render board for a rendered aesthetic I could use composite cladding or I could use a mixture and you can't easily do that with masonry the outer leaf has to be either facing brick or render and then we need to consider drafts or air tightness and it's much easier with timber frame to get that tightness since you're using a combination of vapor barrier and a breather membrane whereas for a cavity wall you're relying on taping the foil in the cavity and it's difficult to maintain full air tightness at all the awkward junctions next reason and in a traditional cavity wall you only have the air cavity to provide the water barrier element in a timber frame it's the air cavity supplemented by the breather membrane so you get a much higher level of moisture and damp barrier one way whilst allowing the building to breathe the other way. The next reason is convenience and speed and I want to avoid scenarios where I'm getting held hostage to broken promises on dates because masonry trades are just so inundated with work at the moment and if you're self building the timber frame element the whole thing wind and water tight, roof on, windows and doors in and sealed without having to wait on your bricky. The outer brick leaf can go on pretty much any time so timber frame is a massive advantage for streamlining the trades. I mean you can even get your roof to tiles on without having the brick in place. Next reason is in a traditional cavity wall there's no space for services and dot dabbing with skim is okay as we said but it does increase the wall thickness. It's also more expensive than plastering and there's still no room for heating pipes once you get your pipe insulation on. Timber frame solves all of that. 
Now the only possible benefit for these small projects I see for traditional cavity over timber on these small projects is where you're using a concrete ground slab and a couple of builder brickies do founds, ground slab, walls up, insulation in, openings forms with lintels to roof level in super quick time since there's just one trade involved and an enjoiner's coming after and it works really well. It is however harder to find teams to do that nowadays. You're also giving up control of the setting out let me know what I'm missing in the comments about these comparisons. Me, I'll always go for timber frame for these small house extension projects because me and my colleagues work pretty much as multi-tradesmen, running cables, uh, running pipe work, joinery work, fitting windows ourselves as we go along, pretty much like any typical self-builder. Please give me a thumbs up if this comparison was useful to you, it really does help me and I hope to see you in the next one.